So I've been eating for the past 10 minutes because I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. So my KFC wrap has a bite out of it. And I started eating my coleslaw because I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. We'll try again. So I have some cherry Coke in my big tumbler. And I have a KFC wrap, twister wrap thing with some extra mayo and just like a little thing of coleslaw. So today I'm going to tell you guys about, I'm full of black little blotches by the way, I just colored my hair so you'll see it everywhere. That's what happens when you color your hair at home. It's just one of those things. Um, today I'm going to tell you guys about the rest of my pregnancy story, so a disclaimer, it involves mental health, it involves um, discussions of depression, anxiety, all those not so nice things, um, and it also involves thoughts of self-harm, so please if you are triggered by any of those, I don't want you to watch this and be triggered because I don't want anyone to get hurt and I don't want anyone to feel like this is gonna just throw them into a deeper darker hole also i've got a new light in the mac you can see so that's exciting i like it i think it's gonna help um also my lipstick is not built for this food obviously i've only taken one bite it's already not keeping so we'll remember that so let's just get into it and get on where, where I left off where I thought I was recording but I wasn't so um, I'm gonna take a couple of bites and then I'll just continue my story and we left off last where I was talking about I was about four months pregnant and then I got held at gunpoint in my mom's home so yeah heavy I know but nonetheless we made it out alive thankfully thank god Mm -hmm. It's just a small twister, but I'm really hungry, so. The background is so pretty. It's um kind of a Dubai skyline. Mm. I liked it, so we're eating here today in my bedroom. As you can see. Mm. My cherry coke. I've already had two shots of that today. Don't judge me, Karen. Don't come from me, okay? My day was... It started off rough. Okay? It's 3 o'clock already, so... I don't care. So, um... um we left off where I was held at gunpoint um, when I was about four months pregnant at my mom's house. And thankfully we didn't, you know, get harmed or injured or anything like that. And then I, I kind of developed a little bit of PTSD. Um, I told you guys where I would get anxiety every time I would eat and that is not good when you're pregnant. That is not good when you're pregnant you have to eat you have to like get nutrients in um so i was constantly in anxiety i was constantly um scared to eat anything 
Besides that, um, I mentioned that I was alone most of the time. My husband was at work and um, my sisters couldn't always be with me. So uh, at five months pregnant, I was severely depressed. I would wake up and I would cry. I just, I would cry. I wouldn't, I would text my husband while he was at work and I'd be like, I don't want to be pregnant anymore. Um, not meaning that I don't want this baby to be alive anymore or that I wish the baby any harm, but I don't want to be pregnant anymore. Like I want this pregnancy to just be over. Like I can't do this anymore. Um, I would text him that like in the morning I would wake up almost every morning crying. It was just horrible to me. And um, most nights I would not be able to sleep because I was so scared. I had so much anxiety to go to sleep because I didn't know what the next day would bring. So it just keeps you awake. Um, I would go to sleep at four and I would literally fall asleep just before my husband got up to go to work. And when he was at work, I would text him and say, I don't want to be pregnant anymore. I hate this. A little bit of coleslaw. Mm -hmm. and I was so confused because this was supposed to be the happiest time of my life and I wasn't happy and then I started getting the weirdest sensation that um I really not gonna live to see this baby being born I don't know why. I don't know if it was the depression, if it was the anxiety. But I got the weirdest sensation that I was not going to see my child being born. I wasn't going to live to see that. So I had severe anxiety, severe depression. Um, I just woke up every day being so sad, being so traumatized so scared so just not happy and then everyone be like oh my goodness you look so beautiful you must be so happy and then i'd be like yeah you know i'm so happy and then inside i was like no i'm not happy i'm so depressed please help me and i just i wasn't i wasn't happy and um so from five six seven months pregnant i went through a phase where my husband every single day would be scared to leave me alone to go to work because he didn't know what was going to happen while I was at work because I was so severely depressed. I would literally text him and be like, I just woke up and I'm crying because I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And he's like, it's only like a couple months left. You're, you're going to be fine. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to be fine. Like, you don't understand, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, well, what can you do? You can't do anything. You have to push through. You can You can do this. You, you're, you're tough. And I was like, no, no, I'm not tough. So I kind of pushed through every day. Doing mundane things, just trying to make it through the day. Um, trying to clean the house. Trying to make like some nice food, which I can't eat because it gives me anxiety. But my husband can, so trying to get stuff ready for the baby but even at this point even for most moms um getting the baby room ready is a happy thing for me it wasn't i would start preparing his baby room and then i would sit down 
in his nursery and I would just start crying. And I'd be like, I, I don't know why I'm preparing this nursery because I'm never gonna meet him. That was the mindset that I had. I was so convinced that I'm not gonna meet him. I don't know why. <laughs> I seriously don't understand why I have this mindset, but I just had this mindset like, I'm not gonna meet him. I'm going, I'm, something's gonna go wrong with me before I meet him. Um, not that anything's gonna go wrong with him, but something's gonna happen to me and I'm not gonna meet him. So I would start doing the nursery. I would start like packing his, folding his clothes, like putting his diapers, like, you know, putting it in the little baby changing station. Then I would just sit on the floor and start crying because I'd be like, why am I doing this? I'm not gonna meet him. That's how deep and dark my hole was. And then like I said I wouldn't sleep most nights and then one night or not one night but like randomly it started to get better um I would go, to, I, my whole pregnancy, I couldn't sleep laying down. If I laid down, I would get the worst heartburn and like very bad cramps and just, <clears throat> I was so uncomfortable. I could not sleep laying down. So my whole pregnancy, I slept laying, I had to sit upright. So we pushed the wall against the bed, against the wall. Even saying it, like I just get pushing the the bed against the wall so that I could sleep with a pillow propped up against the wall so I could sit up, sleeping, sitting upright because when I lay down, I would just get the worst heartburn, the worst indigestion. Like I was too uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep laying down. My whole pregnancy, basically, from like three months on, I couldn't sleep laying down. And... um so that was also a big thing for me. So I would not be able to sleep because I wouldn't be used to sleeping sitting upright. And then eventually I got used to the idea of sleeping upright, but right at the end. So I would go to sleep at a reasonable time. And um, it was already a bit where I was like five, six months, which is kind of moving toward the third trimester. So that was, you know, uh, convenient timing uh, and then one day I was seven months pregnant and I started to kind of deal with it in my own way where I would just internalize all the, the, the anxiety and you know just everything I just I would try to push it to one side with like no just have the baby have the baby and it'll be okay just get this baby into this world. You, that's your only job for now. Then I was seven months pregnant and me and my husband, he's like, okay, we need to get you out of the house. You can't stay here like all day, every day. So we went to go eat pizza. Which I didn't want to do because I was like, I do not want to eat pizza. And I also didn't want to eat pizza in public. Because I had this thing where I had so much anxiety. If I ate anything and I wasn't close to home, I was going to get sick and need the bathroom right away and I won't be close to one. That was my anxiety. I think it's called agoraphobia or something. I had that. So he took me, he's like, no, I don't care. 
If you get sick, you get sick, you're pregnant. Like, fuck everyone. Like, you're gonna come with me. We went to go eat pizza and um, it was fine. And we got home and I went to the bathroom. Quick disclaimer, this might be TMI if you're squeamish or you're also eating your lunch or whatever. Um, it's not too crazy, but it's a little bit of a TMI. I went to the bathroom and I um, had to pee. And I was like, this is a lot of pee. <laughs> like, that's a lot of pee. Like, I was like, my bladder was not this full. Like, when you're in your third trimester, you're like, usually peeing always, you know? But this this was a lot of, a lot of fluid coming out of me. So I was like, what's going on? Why am I peeing so much? And then I just didn't pay it any mind. I was like, maybe my bladder was more full than I thought. And I went to wipe and I saw blood, but like fresh, fresh blood. And it wasn't just spotting, it was a lot. Like full on period blood. I shot it to my husband and I said, like, Brandon, Brandon, come here, come here now, come here now. And he just rushed into the bathroom and I showed him the toilet paper and I was like, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. And he's like, okay, okay, you need to breathe. You need to just breathe. You're fine. It's going to be okay. I was like, no, it's not okay. I had like this really big, like, um, gush of water coming out of me and now I'm bleeding like a lot and we need to go to the hospital right now and I was like shaking at this point and I was like can you just can you hand me a pad like a pad like a sanitary pad just hand me like a sanitary pad and he went into the room and he went into my like cupboard and he gave me a sanitary pad and I put it in and he got me into the car and we rushed to the hospital and all the way there I was talking to my baby um he already had his name he I, we already knew he was a boy and I was just like, please, baby Dean, just be okay for mommy. Be, just be okay for mommy. Be okay. Please just be okay for mommy. And I, I couldn't feel him move and it freaked me out. And I was like, please, I, I, I fought this whole pregnancy through. I fought for you so hard. Like there were times when I didn't want to fight. I feel like I couldn't fight, but I, I fought my whole pregnancy through for you so bad. Like, can you please just fight for mommy? Please just fight for me. And... We arrived at the hospital and we went to the emergency care and um, I told them I'm seven months pregnant and I am bleeding. And the guy looked at me and was like, you need to go straight to maternity ward. No two ways about it, straight to maternity. So I went there, the nurse received me, she's like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm seven months pregnant and I'm bleeding. She's like, let's get you onto a bed. They put a little strap around my stomach and they checked his heart rate, checked my heart rate. We could hear his heart beating, he's moving around a lot, he's fine. She like, we'll probably just um, give you like a little checkup, maybe give you some medicine and send you home. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, something serious. They're like, they're gonna do a checkup and then they're gonna send me home. And then <clears throat> she's like, I need to see how much blood is in the pad because I had to put in a pad because of bleeding. And I went to the bathroom and I took the pad out. She's like, you need to give it to me. I need to see like how much is there. And when I went to the bathroom and I, I pulled down my, my underwear, I saw that there was a lot of blood. And I was kind of like scared. I was like, this is a lot of blood. Like I just heard his heartbeat and I could feel him moving around, but this is just a lot of blood. Like this is not good. And I kind of called her 
into the the bathroom and I was like, um, nurse, like, can you come in here? And I took the pad and I showed her, I was like, this is a lot of blood. She looks at the pad and she goes, that's a lot of blood. You're right. That's not, that's not normal. That's not, it's not supposed to, to bleed like that. She's like, okay, well, get it back. Take your underwear off, get back onto the bed. And I put one of those linen saver thingies um, underneath me and I had no underwear on, I had a dress on. And they put the blanket over me. <clears throat> and then she went to go phone my gynecologist and she told him the whole story, everything that I was, <clears throat> you know, bleeding and things like that. And I had felt a gush of water because I told them that. And then she came back and she's like, okay, we need to do an internal exam and make sure that everything is fine. And while she's walking into the room, she's like looking at the monitor and she's like, do you feel that? And I was like, feel what? Feel what? What's going on? What, what do you mean? And she looks at the monitor and she goes, you just had a contraction. I was like, I didn't feel anything. Like it felt like the baby was moving a little bit, but I didn't feel like a pain or like a contraction or anything like that. And she's like, no, you're having a full on contract. Like, it, there it goes again. Do you not feel that? I was like, no, no, I don't. I don't feel that. I don't, I don't feel the, I don't know what's going on. And she's like, we need to check you. We need, the doctor said we need to check to make sure you're not dilated. You're having contractions, you're bleeding. We need to check. So she does an internal exam and she is done with her internal exam and she looks at me, she goes, you are four centimeters dilated. You are in labor. And I, I swear to you, I was like, there's no fucking way that I am in labor. Cause I had decided from the beginning, I wanted a C-section cause I'm just one of those people that I'm so scared of natural labor. Like I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna do that. Um. She's like, well, if you don't want to do natural labor, we need to get your gynecologist over here right away to do the C-section because you're actively in labor. Your water had broken, you're bleeding, you're having contractions, you're four centimeters dilated. We, we need to get you to into an emergency C-section right now. So I was like, well, then you need to get a doctor because I ain't pushing, I ain't pushing nothing. And I know a lot of women are going to be like, your body's made for that. That's what you're supposed to do. Why didn't you just go with it if you didn't feel pain? Everyone's different. It's my body. I have the right to choose what I want to do. And I chose not to do it to give birth naturally. I had chosen that since the beginning that I found out I was pregnant. I did not want to give birth naturally. Since the moment I found out I was pregnant, I said that I wanted a cesarean. I was too scared. I was not comfortable with giving birth naturally. I wanted a cesarean. So when she said to me, now is the time to decide, I was like, please get my doctor. I please, I want a C-section. She phoned my doctor. He said he was on his way. So. So they put a drip on me. They were like, okay, baby time, baby's coming. Put a drip on me, they prepared me for theater. My husband was at the um, reception getting ready to sign me out. They went and go, they went to fetch him and told him, nope, she's not going anywhere. She's gonna give birth. Oh, well, she's gonna have a C section. Um, you need to come back. And he's like, what? I'm sorry, what? And, the, and they were like, yeah, she's she's in labor. You need to come back. She's gonna get a cesarean right now. So he went back and um, he met me. Well, I, I got completely undressed. At this point, we had already phoned my mom. And my parents like phoned everyone, told them that I'm gonna get a cesarean. They've, they've confirmed that 
I'm in labor and I need to get a cesarean. So uh, my mom and they were already on their way. <clears throat> he then started filling in the forms to admit me again because I'm getting get surgery. Um, and then I just remember it being all of a sudden the world just moved in slow motion. My mom showed up and I heard my dad's voice in the corridor and then they were in the room. And I remember my dad coming to me and he just started hugging me. And he was like, this is happening. You're having, you're having a baby. My baby is having a baby. And he held me and my mom started crying and she was so excited. She helped me take out all my piercings and things like that, like took off my rings because you can't go into theater with all your jewelry. And um, My husband went to go get dressed to go into the theater with me. They pushed me in. They put me on the bed and like made me hunch forward to do the spinal thing where they numb you. It wasn't bad at all. The people that I've heard that explained it to me made me shit scared shitless because I was like, this is gonna hurt. It didn't really hurt that much. Maybe it was the adrenaline, I don't know. Um, I didn't hurt that much and I could start feeling my legs going numb and then I heard my doctor and I was like oh my gosh oh thank you you're here like Dean is um he's too early because at that stage we had chosen his name you know Dean is too early like um he's a month too early is he gonna be okay you know I don't know what to do like I don't know why and he just smiled he's like no it's fine he's gonna be fine you're gonna be fine he's gonna be fine <clears throat> Don't worry, you just need to calm, calm down. Because we can't do the surgery if you're freaking out. You need to just calm down. And so they started cutting me. And you know, it's, it's a weird sensation because you don't feel the pain. But you feel like the tugging. And then 15 minutes later, I heard my son crying for the first time. And they held him up. The nurse held him up because they put like a little curtain between you and the, the doctors because they're operating on you. And they held him up and I, I remember I looked down and it was the most beautiful moment of my entire life. I have, at that stage, lived to be 25 years old. And in 25 years, I've never in my life experienced love like that. When I laid my eyes on him, I couldn't believe that he was mine. I couldn't believe that he was my son. And all those months of anxiety and depression and just being scared and being depressed, it just didn't matter at that point. He was perfect. He was beautiful. He was the most beautiful baby in the entire world. And he was crying and I was like, that's my son. They're holding my son. And my, my husband, bend down and he's like that's our son that's our son and I'm like I know that's our son and I was so scared that his lungs wasn't going to be okay because he was born a month early and with any specifically a baby boy if they're born too early their their lungs haven't matured yet <clears throat> and then I heard the pediatrician say his lungs are good his lungs are strong he's strong he's fine and then 
they gave them to me. And I held myself for the first time. And I didn't ever think I was gonna meet him. I was so caught up in this depression that I didn't think I was gonna meet him. And I was holding my son and he was perfect. He is perfect. And they gave him to me and um, they sewed me up. And um, <clears throat> they do the thing where they put you to skin on skin. Uh, because it was a month early, my milk hadn't come in yet, so I couldn't breastfeed him, which I felt really bad that I couldn't breastfeed. I was gonna try, but if it wasn't, if it, if he didn't, if he didn't take to it, I wasn't gonna force it. Um, so my my milk hadn't come in yet at that point, so I didn't have any milk. So I couldn't breastfeed him and um but they put him on my skin so they were they put him on my um chest and they put like a blanket around you and they strolled me to my room while he was laying on my chest and I was so doped up on the medicine and the and the the adrenaline and the excitedness <laughs> that I literally told everyone that was passing by just in the, in the hallway. I was like, look at, that, look at my baby, he's perfect, he's perfect. Like I grabbed random nurses and people just telling them how beautiful my baby is and how perfect he is. And then you stay in hospital for three days. After a cesarean, if everything goes fine, you go home after two days. My son was fine. I was fine. Um, so we actually chose a room that allowed my husband to sleep over. Sorry. in the room with us while um, I'm there so I wasn't alone my husband slept in the room with us there's a special bed and everything for him because we didn't want him to miss the first few days of our son's birth this was before COVID so um Everything was fine. We were tired, but we were handling it. And then we went home. And um, my mom came to stay with us. My mom and my dad came to stay with us for like a week or so just to help us with the nighttime routine because a newborn anyone who has had a newborn or you know if you're going to have a newborn <laughs> here's a little tip for you they kind of they feed every two to three hours and then you have to burp them and whatever and you know get them back to sleep and if they have um like problems they keep like if they have when that's stuck or something like that or they don't want to latch if you're breastfeeding it can take quite quite a time to get used to and you don't get any sleep and so my mom helped us with that um, at night she would help feed him and she would take the night shift and then the next day we would and then they would sleep during the day and then like we made turns we took turns and one night my or well, the night the the week that my mom stayed Everything was amazing. And then my mom went home after a week.
Let me just take a couple of bites in there. Talking about it now even makes me anxious. Thinking about like putting myself back in those days. It feels like I can't breathe. <laughs> My kid's so anxious. If you guys just heard someone going woo, there's a um, what do they call it? There's a slide thingy that goes from the top of our building to the top of the next building, and people go down it over the water over the marina because the marina runs right through here. Kind of cool. To hear the constant <laughs> like the first time I heard it, I was like, what the hell? Someone's heard. And then we realized that they get on on top of our building. Yeah, so so after the week my mom went home. And I was left alone with my son, with my husband. And then one night, I remember sitting and looking at my son and I told my husband that I can't do this. There was nothing wrong. He wasn't crying, he wasn't being difficult. I just, I felt like I couldn't do this. He was like, what, you can't do, what do you mean? I was like, I can't do this. I cannot be here. I cannot be here, I cannot be this baby's mom. I, I, I'm, I can't do it. And he's like, what do you mean, are you okay? I'm like, no. And I started crying and I said to him, can we please, can we please just get out of the house? Can we please just go to my mom's house? Can we please just leave? Like I can't, I cannot be here right now. I cannot. It felt like I didn't want to even exist at that point. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I remember we had the door of our apartment open because it was very hot, it was very warm. And I was sitting in my underwear with like a gown on. Our next door neighbor was about my age and she just found out she was pregnant and um, she walked by while I was crying. And I don't think she saw me crying and she knocked on the door and she, she's like, oh, is that the baby? Did you guys have your baby? And I kind of quickly wiped away my tears and I was like, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he was born, he's fine. And she's like, can I come in? I was like, of course, yeah, you can come in. And she came in and she's like, she didn't touch him or anything. She just bent down and she's like, oh my goodness, he's so beautiful. I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. And I just I was trying to like not freak out because I was freaking out. And um, she's like, well, congratulations. You know, he's so beautiful and I'm so glad he's okay and you're okay. And she had told me the previous week that she was pregnant as well. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, this is going to be you in a couple of months. And when you have a few months, it's going to be you. 
and she was just so excited and I didn't I didn't want to like scare her so I didn't want to cry in front of her or tell her that I, what I was feeling so I was just keeping it in um so I was like yeah it's amazing he's perfect and I'm so thankful and then she said good night and she went <clears throat> and then when she left I said to my husband Let's get the baby's bag pack as much as things as you can for him into this bag I don't care about clothes for myself just get me out of here so we went to my mom's house we arrived at my mom's house unannounced I opened the doors I gave the baby to my husband I ran to my mom I jumped into her arms and I started bawling and I said mom I can't do this she's like what I said I can't I can't be this baby's mom I said, I don't know what, I just don't feel right. I don't feel, I don't feel like I wanna live anymore. I, I feel like he deserves a better mom. I feel like he deserves someone better equipped than me. Like I am not, I'm not, I'm not strong enough to be his mom. I, I was so anxious and so depressed the entire time I was pregnant with him. I, I don't, I can't be his mom, I can't do it. And she said to me, you know what? The moment we got in the car and left your house, I didn't feel right. Something felt off, she knew. So we stayed there for a couple of days with my mom and dad. And then one night it got really bad. I was very overwhelmed with hormones and darkness. I felt like I couldn't be a good mom. And I wanted to kill myself. And I was having a panic attack, a really, really bad panic attack. And my husband and my mom and my dad were all trying to calm me down and they were like you're okay it's okay it's just your hormones and you know you just had a baby and i was like no no i can't do this i can't do this i don't want to be here anymore i don't want to exist anymore i don't want to breathe anymore i didn't know why I didn't, I couldn't, if you asked me why, I couldn't explain to you why. I just didn't want to be alive. And I said to my husband, I, 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 I don't want to be alive anymore. And he started crying and he said to me, you can't leave me. You can't leave me, you can't leave our son. And he asked me why, why don't you want to be alive anymore? And I said, I don't know. I don't know, I just, if you've ever been there, you can't explain to anyone. You don't know what it is. You don't know what what's making you feel this way. You just know you can't, you don't want to be there anymore. You don't want to exist anymore. And I, I don't know if it was the hormones, if it was depression, I don't know. I can't tell you, I just, I was in such a dark cloud and he was begging me, just please, just fight. And I, I said to him, I can't fight. I've been fighting for seven months to even be okay, to make sure that our baby is born. And now he's born, he'll be fine. He has you, he has my mom, he has my dad. He doesn't need, he doesn't need me. I'm no good for him. And then I went, into the room that we were staying in, which was my mom's room. 
I started having a really bad panic attack to the point where my mom and my dad and my husband physically had to like hold me because I was freaking out so badly that I couldn't keep still like I couldn't I couldn't I was pacing you know I was pacing up and down being like I need to I need to get out of here I need to do something I need to just I was, I was having a really bad panic attack and she had already given me, my mom had some um, calming medication like Xanax and she already gave me one and it wasn't helping and I was still freaking out and I was pacing up and down and I was like, please, please, I can't, I can't, I can't be alive. I, I'm having like a really bad panic attack. Everyone was trying to like hold me down and I, and then my dad grabbed my arm. He started walking. He started walking out of the house into the yard. I had slippers on and pajamas. And he was walking out of the yard into the street. And I was like, dad, where are we going? He didn't answer me. He just, he was holding my hand and he just started walking. <clears throat> And um, we walked down the road all the way to the end of the road. And he let go of my hand. He's like, breathe. And I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And he's like, I know. I know what you feel like. I know you feel like it's the end of the world. And you don't want to exist right now. But you have no other choice than to fight. Because now you're not just fighting for yourself or even for your husband. You have a little baby boy that needs you. And I said to him, but I think that my son deserves a better mom than me. I'm so weak. and fragile and just, I'm so messed up. And he said to me, no, no, you're not. Right now, you're just a little bit running low on fumes. He, he described it to me like, you're running low. But tomorrow you're gonna wake up and the sun is gonna shine again. And you're not going to be 100% better. But you're still going to wake up. And tomorrow, you're going to keep on fighting. And the day after that, you're going to keep on fighting. And before you know it, it's going to be a year. It's going to be two years. And you're going to be glad you didn't do this. And I think, I don't know if it was my dad the words that he spoke, the comfort that he gave, the medicine started working that my mom had given me. But I started to calm down. I started to feel calm. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was. Maybe God or the Holy Spirit or something. Something calmed me down. Something came over me and I just felt okay. I felt content for that moment. I felt like, this is okay. This is, you know, I, I didn't feel better, but I felt like not as panicky and, you know, completely freaking out. So we started walking back. Ooh. I'm sorry guys, I know this is the, the most depressing series ever, but it's my story, my journey, and I believe a lot of women go through this, so 
I'm here to tell you the good news. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> so, I we was to be walked back, and um, my husband met me and he like hugged me and he's like, "Are you fine?" I'm like, "I'm not fine, but I feel better." That night, I was in anxious. I had a lot of anxiety. It felt like I was fighting off anxiety at this point. Like I would start sleeping and then I would jolt awake. Um, and I'd be like, <laughs> like getting that panicky feeling. I'd be like, no, 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 like no, this is, I'm not, I'm not going to give in to this. And I would fight it off. And then after a while it would go away. And um, this went on for maybe a month or two. <laughs> I would have good days where I would feel fine, not completely fine, but better than other days. And other days I would have a whole day where I was so anxious and so panicked and I would just fight anxiety the entire day. Like I would, I would sit and just start crying and I would sit and I could feel the anxiety creeping up on me. Like I, I would start getting like short of breath and I'd be like, start like pacing or, um, and I would just, when that would happen, I would just go sit next to one of my sisters or I would hold my son or I would sit up with my mom and talk to her or we'd sit with my husband. And we basically left our entire lives, like our home, we, we didn't go back for months except to go get like clothes and things like that for the baby and we lived with my parents for two to three months and I I couldn't be left alone. I was too anxious when I was alone. My point is if you're watching this and you're scared or you're anxious or you feel like you don't want to be alive I don't know for what reason maybe you're not even a mom you know maybe you've not even just had a baby maybe you're just someone who feels like they don't want to be here you don't even know what the reason is maybe there's no reason for you to feel like you want to die maybe there's no reason for you to feel depressed or anxious or there doesn't have to be a reason because there was no reason for me. And if there is a reason why you're feeling like that, I'm sorry. If you're watching this and you have ever had thoughts like that or you ever have thoughts like that, please keep fighting. I promise it gets better. It doesn't get better right away. It wasn't better for me right away. There were days where I would wake up and I wish I didn't. But it's now almost two years later and I'm so thankful I didn't go through with what I planned. Because my son is so gorgeous. He's the most beautiful baby boy in the entire world. And he says my name, he says, Mama, Mama. And then he runs to me and he like holds his arms open. And I would have never experienced that if I had given up. I promise you that life has a lot more beautiful moments for you in store if you just keep on fighting. I would have never woken up to my husband smiling at me again. I would have never felt his hug, never felt his kiss again, never had an adventure with him again, never made him laugh, never had him make me laugh at some things. Like, it gets better, I promise. I promise it gets better. 
don't give up. There are so many more beautiful moments waiting for you in life. And you are here for a reason. Even if you feel like no one cares, I promise you, someone does. And if you're watching this and you feel like no one cares, you're welcome to message me. Even if you just want to talk, I care then. I will listen to your story gladly. And if I'm the only person that responds to you and can talk you or talk to you or give you attention for two minutes of my day between my crazy toddler and, you know, life and I can just comfort you in any way, you're welcome to. Don't give up. I know it feels like it's the end, but it's just the beginning. I promise. That's my story. My pregnancy and after pregnancy. And yeah, it's uh, sad, but it has happy ending. My toddler is running around outside and we, since he was born, we've moved to Dubai a few months ago. We're now living in Dubai and I found this wonderful new purpose of being his mom and being a better wife and I would have missed so many beautiful moments so if I had given up way back when and my dad didn't take me to the stop sign outside our house <laughs> I wouldn't be here so dad I love you so much and I'm so thankful you saved my life that day and mom you're the best mom and I could only hope to be as good as you and to my husband I love you more than life and to my son if you ever watch this in the future I know that it might seem like all you brought me was sadness because it does seem like that when I tell the story but you gave me a reason to fight. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have fought. So, I love you always. And that's the end of my pregnancy series. Um, my next couple of videos will be a little bit, a lot more upbeat. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Once again, I hope that if there are some of you out there that feel the same way, this will inspire you to feel better or to reach out and get help. <laughs>